In this lecture, we're going to look at the muscles of the head and face. Now the muscles of facial expression lie within the subcutaneous layer of the integumentary system. And they usually originate in the fascia or skull bones and insert into the skin. Now because of their insertions, the muscles of facial expression tend to move the skin rather than a joint when they contract. And so let's take a look at some of those muscles. Now this muscle here, the old name for it is going to be, well, if you remember your skull anatomy, what bone is here? Yes, it's the frontal bone. And so this muscle was called the frontalis. If we look at the back of the skull, remember that bone was the occipital bone. And so this muscle was the occipitalis. And then we have a tendon, a very wide tendon. Remember, a name for a wide tendon is an aponeurosis. And so the old name for this was the Galea aponeurotica. Well, as usual, they've gone and changed the names on some of these. And so the new name for the frontalis is the frontal belly of the occipitofrontalis. And of course the um, occipitalis became the occipital belly of the occipitofrontalis. Galea aponeurotica became the epicranial aponeurosis. Okay. Now I guess their thought was that this really is one large muscle with two bellies. Kind of a digastric muscle. Okay, but don't use that term digastric muscle because we already have a digastric muscle that we'll be talking about later. So the name for this as a whole is going to be the epicraneous or epicranial muscles. And then we have this one weird uh, muscle here that uh, is attached to the epicranial aponeurosis and it kind of holds it down and is then attached to um, the zygomatic arch here. Here they have it caught and it's flipping up like some weird cowlick and it's called the temporal parietalis. Again, the temporal parietalis. Kind of a hard word to say. But what it does is it uh, pretty much hangs on to the epicranial aponeurosis and holds it down. You know, kind of like those those uh, hats with the flap on it. If this was the frontalis, this is the epicranial aponeurosis, and back here would be the occipitalis. This would be the temporal parietalis. And then underneath that is going to be the temporalis muscle. And that's one of the main muscles of mastication or chewing. Now another muscle of mastication or chewing is going to be the masseter muscle. That's the one that allows for a nice strong bite. Now the buccinator muscle is what is used to kind of push food um, away from the teeth and move it around inside the mouth. And if you play like the trumpet or trombone or something like that, that's the muscle you would tighten down um, to keep your cheeks from blowing out like a chipmunk. Okay. And let's see, what else? Oh, that's also the muscle that would kind of push your cheek into your uh, teeth so that when you bite down, you accidentally bite down the inside of your cheek. So that's not real fun. If we go here, we have the abicularis oculi that surrounds the eye. On top of the nose, sitting like a breathe right strip, we have the nasalis. At the bridge of the nose, we have the procerus. And these two muscles we'll be able to see a little bit better from the frontal view. Uh, right here, we have the levator labi superioris. That's going to pull your lip up. Kind of give you that Elvis Presley look. With a thank you, thank you very much. So it pulls your lip up. Now this muscle, which isn't labeled, is one of my favorite muscles. 
This is the Levator Labi Superioris Alequae Nasi. And you're probably freaking out about now. Again, let me say it one more time. Levator Labi Superioris Alequae Nasi. Well, let's go back to this Levator Labi Superioris. Levator does what? You get onto the L Levator, and what does it do? It goes up, and so it elevates. This is going to elevate. Lay by means lip, um, and this is superioris, so it's going to elevate the lip up. It's kind of redundant, really, but anyway, it's going to elevate the lip up. The levator aleque nasi superior. Oops, I said that wrong. The levator lay by superioris aleque nasi. There we go. It's going to do a couple of things. It's going to flare the nostrils. And it's also going to raise the lip up. And then we have these two muscles coming off of the zygomatic. We have the zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. How you want to remember these two apart, the major from the minor, typically major supports minor. So that's what you want to remember. Major supports minor. There's one exception I can think of. That would be the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. But if you're doing a push-up, then major is going to support minor. Major is going to be um, below minor. Again, that's if you're doing a push-up. So, again, major supports minor. Zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major. And then we have this, the orbicularosaurus. And that wraps around the lips and that's going to purslip the, the, the lips. Um, and, and what does that mean? I should say purstring the lips. And um, like if you pucker your lips to like blow out a candle, that's what that would do. And right here we have the depressor labi inferioris that pulls your lip down. So like you're pouting, so it pulls the lip down. And then next, we have the depressor anguli oris. That pulls the corners of your mouth down. Moving along, um, the anterior view, you can see the occipitalis muscle or the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis. And again, you see, can see the epicranial aponeurosis or the Galea aponeurotica. And here's the temporal parietalis, again attaching to the zygomatic arch. And then above the eyes we have the corrugator supercilii. Utilize those when you're mad. Uh, the procerus, again is at the bridge of the nose. And again, sitting on the nose like a breathe right strip is your nasalis. And again, my favorite muscle right there the levator labi superioris aleque nasi, and then our levator labi superioris that pulls the lip up, orbicularis oris, zygomaticus minor and major, and then this one is a more superficial muscle, um, and if you haven't figured out yet, the left side of the screen is the more superficial muscles, the right side of the screen is going to have a little deeper muscles. But right here is the rhizorus, and that pulls the corners of your mouth kind of to the side, like one of those polite smiles, like you're giving a polite smile and kind of nodding, like, get me out of here. Um, that's, that's this one, the rhizorus. So actually kind of sounds like a couple of dinosaurs, doesn't it? The abicularosaurus rex and the rhizorus. Anyway, again, you have the Bicularosaurus. And then this muscle here is the platysma. Platy means flat. If you think of like a platypus, it has a flat face. Okay. Um, platy. Uh, platysma, again, very flat muscle. Very thin muscle. If you're dissecting this out on a cadaver, it's not much thicker than a few sheets of paper. Okay. 
and it's one of those when guys are shaving and you kind of tense up your neck uh, almost like if anybody remembers Pee Wee Herman he would like make a weird face and uh, make those neck muscles stick out that platysma stick out and um, so that's the platysma and again we can see the depressor anguli oris and um, the depressor labi inferioris Now the extrinsic muscles of the eyes, there's going to be six extrinsic eye muscles that control movement of each eyeball. They're called extrinsic because they originate on the outside of the eyeball in the bony orbit and they're going to insert on the outer surface of the sclera, the sclera being the white of the eye. And by the way that term sclera uh, comes from the, the word scleros which means tough and the outer eyeball is very tough if you've ever tried to dissect like a cow's eye or a sheep's eye or a human eye in a cadaver lab uh, it's very tough to cut through that so it is very tough and those muscles um, with the words rectus in their name have an obvious action the inferior rectus muscle moves the eye inferiorly um, so you'd be looking down. Superior rectus, you'd be looking up. Lateral rectus, you'd be looking laterally. Uh, medial rectus, you'd be looking toward your nose. And so the actions of the two oblique muscles, though, are a little bit different. And you can't deduce from their names what they do. To understand how they move uh, the eye, you must know the origin, insertion, and the usual path that each follows. And I do have a separate video that talks about that in more depth. In this view, we can see the lateral rectus muscle, which is going to move your eye laterally or looking toward your temples. Then we have the superior rectus muscle, which makes your eye look up. Then the inferior rectus muscle that makes your eye look down and then if we look at this medial surface here, we have the medial rectus muscle, which makes you look towards your nose. And then we can see the superior oblique muscle. Now that's going to go through a little pulley called the trochlea. Remember that name because the cranial nerve that innervates the superior oblique muscle is called the trochlear nerve. Okay. Now, if we take a look at it going through the pulley, and we can see it better here on the lateral view, going through the pulley and attaching to the eyeball. It's going to attach kind of strangely there. It goes across. So when this contracts, it's going to rotate the eyeball. So it's going to rotate it medially. Okay, so we're going to get medial rotation of the eyeball. And when it pulls on the eye, it's going to make the eye look down and out. So even though it's called the superior oblique muscle, you're going to look down and out. If we see the inferior oblique, it's going to rotate the eyeball in the opposite direction. So you're going to get lateral rotation. Okay. And you're going to look up and out. Okay. So superior oblique, you're going to look down and out inferior oblique you're going to look up and out again superior oblique you're going to have medial rotation of the eyeball the inferior oblique you're going to have lateral rotation of the eyeball okay now muscles that move the mandible uh, we have four pairs of muscles that move the mandible and are known as muscles of mastication. Again, mastication is chewing. We have the masseter um, on the side of your jaw. We have the temporalis. And we have the medial pterygoid. And that accounts for uh, strength of bite. And then we have the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles to help uh, chew by moving the mandible from side to side. Additionally, the muscles can protract or protrude the mandible as well.
And so here we can see the temporalis muscle and right here the masseter muscle. Now if we dissect away the masseter and dissect away part of the jaw, if you remember on the skull there were the medial and lateral pterygoid processes. Ter teri means wing. Okay, so uh, attached to those wings is the lateral pterygoid muscle and the medial pterygoid muscle. And then, uh, I'm sorry, these are the lateral pterygoids. And then here's the medial pterygoids.